three, two, one, it's showtime. We're gonna have a real good time, feel good time. Breaking out and joy and laughter all over the place. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Don't be so legendary. Sherry's sure, got you feeling good. And now, your host, Sherry Shepard. Tiptoeing through the tulips. That's what I feel like. <laughs> this Willie Sinclair the third from the Milwaukee Sinclair. Some, he just, he didn't want summer to end. So he decided he wanted to make me look like a tulip. So <laughs> that's what he did. Ha! Hello, John. Hello, hello. Very Patti LaBelle, LaBelle vibes. Like oh, that vintage. Oh, the Patti look. LaBelle. Yeah. I'm not a girl. I'm a I love it. Well, I have to say to you, Sherry, good, uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. And I, our Sherry family got a little bigger today. It did. Listen, we have WLWT Channel 5 in Cincinnati who joined us. We want to say hello to them. Yeah. I love Cincinnati and their Black Music Walk of Fame. And as you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, unless you're on our new station, KVCW 33. So welcome to both of them, to the family, and let's yes. get into the show. Yes. Yes. Welcome to the Sherry family. And y'all, because it just happened, and I haven't been talking about it at all, and, and you may not uh, have been watching yesterday, but I want you to say hello to my new little friends, <laughs> Lucy and Ethel. <laughs> And for those of you who don't know who Lucy and Ethel are, this is JT and Young Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I could go all night with those. Y'all, everybody in Texas is getting into formation because Beyonce is bringing her tour to her hometown, Texas. Oh my goodness. The tour is not over, so you still can go. If you, if you can find any tickets in Texas, you can still go to the tour. Now, uh, clap if you went to, to the Renaissance Tour, Beyonce. Okay, I just have to say, I, I bought tickets earlier for New York for my glam squad to go, and I was still healing, so I was not able to go. So I talked my girlfriend, Yamanika Saunders, into going with me to St. Louis. So we went to St. Louis to see the Renaissance Tour. And for those of you who did not go see Beyonce, I gotta tell you, she put on a show. It literally was, I, I felt like it was just a spiritual experience. I just, I, with Beyonce, I spent so much of my pension getting these <laughs> tickets. Cause I'm not part of the beehive, but when I tell you Beyonce was worth it. And I don't know, being at this concert, because she had sold out these arenas, it was so many people there. I've always had this fantasy. You know, like when you go see Prince or somebody, you have a fantasy that they're gonna single you out. I have always had this fantasy that Beyonce was gonna look out amongst everybody and see me and say, Sherry Shepard, come here. <laughs> I don't know why. Because she was literally, John, they had Beyonce floating above all the people. On a horse, no less. Floating above all the people looking like Mary Poppins. All, and I thought it was, I literally thought, and she, cause I was like, Beyonce, Beyonce. And I thought she was gonna be on a horse and look down and go, come dance with me and Blue Eyes. <laughs> So I thought it was gonna be me, Blue Ivy, and Beyonce holding, the, doing the freedom thing. But one thing about Beyonce, you know, if you wanna get noticed, she will call you out. You have to have a big, huge sign because she was on the horse and she was going, hello, Amber, hi, Ashley, it's your birthday. She called out everybody with a sign. She is the queen of reading signs. And I said to my girlfriend, Yamanika, I said, why didn't we make a sign? <laughs> 
There was a Michael's Arts and Craft right around the corner. We could have went and got the glue, the glitter, and everything. Everything. I just felt like I was not equipped. I didn't have a fan. But when I tell you, the show was an explosion of fashion. Everybody was decked out in their finest silverware. I'm telling you, Beyonce, everybody was decked out. Look, when I, it was more... <laughs> it was more belly and booty shorts. I have never at the Beyonce concert. And there's nobody like Beyonce who can tell you what to wear. She said, it is my birthday and I want you to wear silver. So everybody put on silver. And I got this uh, silver cat suit from Michelle Lopez. And I wore this silver cat suit. And I tell you, that's the, that is comedian extraordinaire Yamanika Sanders. And we had on silver. And I, you couldn't tell me nothing. Let me tell you, when I... And it was St. Louis, so it was the summertime. And that thing, and Michelle Lopez, it was, the, uh, it was a cat suit. John, it took three people to get that cat suit on me. And I lost, I was so hot, so I'm sweating. I lost about five pounds <laughs> during the entire concert. But once I pulled it off, I gained all seven of the five that I lost. <laughs> that. The men outdid the women at the, at the concert. The men were, I spent my entire time running after all the boys going, oh my God, you look so good. They didn't even pay attention to me. They were like, thank you, darling. And I kept walking. <laughs> so I don't know. And I, you know, with some people, because people take edibles before they go to the concert. So if people was there and they took edibles, one lady was freaking out because she saw 30,000 people running around in silver. She thought aliens had landed. <laughs> at the concert, but oh my goodness. The, the one thing I loved about Beyonce was she was so genuine. She like, she really seemed to appreciate that all these people had gotten dressed up to come and see her. And there was one moment, you know when the rock stars, they come out and they just stand on stage and they let you, you know, adore them. Beyonce just stood there and she just smiled and smiled. 30 minutes later, I was like, when's she gonna stop smiling? <laughs> I lost my mind. I just, that's how you know you're a superstar. You just stand, I remember Michael Jackson when he just stood there like that? That was Beyonce. But then the standout of the show was Blue Ivy Carter. When I tell you she stood up, I was like a proud auntie. When she came up, I said, go knees. And she did, she started dancing with her mother. And you could tell Beyonce was so enjoying Blue Ivy. And they danced together. And I went home and I woke Jeffrey up out of a dead sleep. <laughs> I said, Beyonce has Blue Ivy on tour making money for the family. You, I said, look, before I put you out, tell me how you could be a tax write-off for me. <laughs> but Beyonce, I just want to say thank you for such a brilliant show. This is why you are the highest grossing black female artist of all time. Oh, my goodness. So... Now, I didn't, you know, it was Fashion Week, and I did not get to see many New York Fashion Week shows, but I did see designers Cy Sanko's fashion show. Now, this is what I loved about it, because she had a show in the middle of the street in Harlem, and she partnered with Melba of Melba's Restaurant. So they had it in Harlem in front of Melba's Restaurant. So they were serving up couture and cuisine, catfish and catwalks. <laughs> When I tell you the models were so... I look at these models, and they were stunningly beautiful. And, uh, you know, and these models, because most models, John, you see the models, and they look so unhappy, because, you know, they need to eat. <laughs> they, they, they need to eat something, so they're so unhappy. Let me tell you, these were models. These models were... They had thighs, they had hips, and they were smiling the whole time. And, and I loved it being in Harlem because you could scream at them. You can't do that at the fashion shows. There was one woman, she was so beautiful. And I said, oh my God, I'm gonna tell your mama. She... <laughs> and she looked at me and she smiled and I loved it. I even got in on the action after the models left. I, just, I did my little walk down the, walk down the runway. <laughs> there. It was very... Windy. Now, the dress didn't come with slits in it. I took it to the cleaners and had them put a slit in it. And then I went and did my scissors and I put another slit in it. I did not realize it was gonna be so windy. And this, this is when you realize how much cellulite you got. When all that wind is whipping, 
I saw all the cellulite in my thighs. I saw all of the pock marks. I was like, oh my goodness, we gotta cover this up. But it was so much fun. And the best part was in between, this is why the models probably look so happy, John. In between, uh, you could go to Melba's and get oxtails and cornbread <laughs> while you were watching the show. So that's probably why the models were so happy. So thank you to Melba and Cy Sanco for having me at your fashion show. Oh my goodness. Okay, I gotta get this heartbreak out of the way. I wanted something good before I had to go to the, the heartbreak I'm going through. There was so many shocking divorces over the last couple days. Somebody's gotta tell Beyonce it is uncuffed season right now. It is, I cannot get, like every time I have one heartbreak over divorce, then I hear about another one and my heart breaks again. Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones are getting divorced and I just feel like winter came and they went. I don't know what, it, they split. Oh, now y'all just getting that, okay. Um, so some jokes work, some jokes hey. <laughs> It's hard to make divorce funny. This is the hard thing because it's like, you know, you report about it, but it's very hard to make it funny. That's the struggle that I have. And especially, I love these two. They split after four years of marriage and I love them together. It was like that fairy tale. He's a rock star, she's an actress. And I honestly, with any of these divorces, I don't think anybody saw any of the red flags. Now, they say that Joe Jonas allegedly saw her say or do something on the doorbell camera, and that was the final straw for him. So we don't know if that's true, I, but I'm trying to figure out what could he have allegedly seen on the doorbell cam? I look at my doorbell cam on my phone all the time. All I see is uh, that, that homeless man, Fred, going through my garbage can. <laughs> he always there. Fred is always, and I had a doorbell camera on, and I go, Fred, what are you doing? And he's over there. That's all I see. You remember the days, the old days, when the only thing that you had to worry about telling on you was that nosy neighbor from across the street. She knew everything that you were doing. When you, you knew that lady, she knew if you skipped school, she knew if you was bringing in somebody in the house that didn't look like your spouse. But not anymore, people got that doorbell cam. Then my other heartbreak, oh my goodness, Jeezy filed for divorce from Jeannie Mai Jenkins. Now this, she had just posted a beautiful post to him about his upcoming book. Um, and he filed for divorce. I think this was, I don't know if, they ex if she expected it or what, but I do have to say it's very rare with Joe Jonas and Jeezy, it's very rare for a man to file for divorce. Because really, I don't know if y'all know this, only 30% of divorces are filed by the husband. 70% of my women. So husbands typically don't, you know, because husbands are really, really easy. All men want in a marriage, they want their football, they want to be fed, and they want to be, okay, the other L. <laughs> Ooh. 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 This is what I will say. If you want to know what that F is, go ask your mom. <laughs> that... So, the fact that he, and we don't know what happened, I don't even want to speculate, it's just so sad because I got the little girl, Monaco, and I hated to hear this. Uh, this is another one that I hated to hear. Uh, Iman Shumpert and Tayana Taylor are also splitting. I don't like reporting this stuff, but it's like in the news. But th these two seem like such a good match together because they've been together for 10 years. They were married for seven. They have two beautiful kids. Remember, John, they had a reality show. Iman did Dancing with the Stars. Tiana was in a, like a really wonderful movie that I saw. And Tiana put out a very classy statement. She says, we've been, ap we've been apart for a while and it is not due to cheating. You know you can't say nothing like that because somebody like me is going like it. That's the first thing I go to. But Tiana said it's not due to cheating. I'm taking word for that. Her statement was very classy. She says that they are remaining the best of friends. They're still gonna raise their babies together. So I'm glad, I'm heartbroken, but I'm glad that they, it's amicable, it seems. And uh, I'm heartbroken because Hugh Jackman and Deborah Lee Furness, 27 years of marriage. 27 years, and, and they, uh, now they're splitting. Now, that, I did not see it coming because they've been together for so long. We've interviewed, when I co-hosted The View, we've interviewed Hugh and he would talk about his wife so lovingly. And I go, when, when I hear 27 years, I'm like, why, why? 
because in 27 years, y'all have been through it. You have grown. You've grown apart. You've gotten back together. You're best friends. Like, I feel like if I had been married 27 years and my husband came to me and said, I want a divorce, I'd go, boy, if you don't stop playing, what are we going <laughs> to eat for dinner? What, y'all know, what are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. But it's... When I think about this, where I come from, people don't get divorced. Over in Chicago, they don't get divorced. They break up and they live together for the next 13 years. <laughs> Especially the people in my family. They, so many people in my family, they are not divorced because they don't want to mess up that pension and Social Security. <laughs> So they stay in the same house, stay married, but you know, but then they be dating other people, but you know they divorce. But all of that. So I don't know, maybe Hugh, you should do do something like that. Y'all just stay together. I don't know. I, I, who am I? And I'm divorced twice, and I'm trying to give somebody uh, <laughs> that's a pot calling the kettle black. But I, you know, I, we're all sad about the divorces, but I am the eternal optimist because when I think about this, all I see is eligible black bachelors. That's what I say. I see eligible, I go, well, uh, Sherry Jenkins, uh, <laughs> Sherry Jonas, <laughs> Sherry Jackman. You can tell I like Jay, Sherry J. I don't, but I think if I had to pick, if I wanted to date somebody, I'd probably have the best chance with Hugh Jackman because he's my age. He's more my age. And I already know what our Christmas card would look like. That is exactly. <laughs> You see that? You see that? Already, even there, we had a connection. Hand was right over mine, close to the heart. And uh, I just... <laughs> so I, w I do wish everybody the best. That's the hardest to report on and make funny. So, uh, oh, my goodness. But I want to... This is, makes me happy. I want to remind everyone that we are kicking off Funny Over 50... And this is our nationwide search. It is a big nationwide search for funny women over 50, AKA my autobiography. But this is your chance to fulfill your dream in comedy. So go to SherryShowTV.com and I want you to send us videos of your funniest original material. And if we choose your video, you could be featured in our Laugh Lounge. And maybe you can go with me and Kim Whitley on our Two Funny Mamas tour. All right, now. I have to tell y'all, I said maybe because I haven't discussed it with Kim Whitley, but it's gonna be fine. You gonna, you gonna get to go. I just gotta tell her first. So y'all go to SherryShowTV.com for more info. And we got a great show for you today because Grammy Award winning artist John Batiste is here. And up next, what I wanted versus what I got. This is what I got. So our first one comes from Reese, who ordered a Beyonce Renaissance hat because she had FOMO when she couldn't get tickets to the concert. Here's the hat Reese wanted. <laughs> Love it. I got the same one. Here's the hat Reese got. Ooh. Ooh. Girl, I know you wanted to go to the Renaissance tour, but in that hat, it looks like you went back in time to the Renaissance. Wrong. <laughs> All y'all kept it. Our next one comes from a viewer who wanted a superhero figurine for their collection. Here's a figurine they wanted. Okay, here's the figurine they got. Ooh. Okay, look at the, he holding his ear, he holding his stomach. That superhero is not saving anybody. In fact, I think he needs an ambulance. Is he all right? Oh my gosh. Okay, our next fail comes from Laura Lee who wanted a monster cake for an upcoming birthday party. So here's a monster cake that Laura Lee wanted. And here's the monster cake Laura Lee got. Oh! Oh! Okay, now that is what I call a scary monster. Now our last one comes from Kimberly, who ordered a wig for those bad hair days. I got it. Yes, I know. Here's the wig she wanted. Oh, now that's cute. Here's the wig she got. Now, you talk about a hard knock life. What in the orphan Annie is on top of her head? If you have a funny fail you'd like to share, go to SherryShowTV.com. And later in the show, the very funny Brad Williams is in my laugh lounge. But up next, award-winning musician John Batiste is here.
Roberts is an incredible musician who plays more instruments than I can name. He has an Oscar, five Grammys, a Golden Globe, and a BAFTA Award, just to name a few. And his new album is called World Music Radio. Please welcome John Batiste. <laughs> When I tell you, because you walk out here in the pride, we are so proud of you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Uh, that is why you have so much energy and love when you come. You can't help but dance when I you come out here. I can't help it. You got to move. That's right. Yeah. You know what? Speaking of moving, because I moved to your music, you are so accomplished, John. You, I mean, even, you won a v on the VMAs. Yes. You won the VMAs. You won an award last week. Congratulations to you. Oh. Like, because I had already given the intro. Okay, so when you win these awards, they actually give you an award. So yes. you won all these awards. Where do you keep all those awards? <laughs> I have, you know, I have them all around the house. And my family's still back in New Orleans. I have some in New Orleans, okay. some in New York. You know, I, I just have them, some in the bathroom. I have mine. Oh, my goodness. You know? I have an Emmy, and I have mine in the bathroom, so yes. I have, like, the toilet paper yes. uh, rolls on my Emmy. It's... Or my wigs. I hang my wigs on them. It's very beautiful and decorative. Yes, it is. You just put it up there, and you look at it, you're like, man. You're taking a bath. Uh-huh. And you're like, I done won that thing. <laughs> Ain't that something? Ain't that something? We did it. That's right, and you're so grateful, you yes. know? But I, you are just, I am in awe of you because you play so many instruments, John. You play the drums, the piano, the melodica, mm -hmm. the guitar. And then I read that you still want to play more. Yes, I, I play 12, I want to get to 20. What? I want to get to 20. I you want to get to 20. Yeah, piano is home base. Piano is my... That's my love. Okay. But I started on the drums, and then I went to the saxophone in sixth grade, and then started playing the guitar and piano, and then I started playing the melodica. It's like a harmonica and a keyboard put together. Right. And then, you know, I really just play whatever the spirit puts on me to play. Wow. Whatever's going to get the emotion across to the people. So do you, when you're playing, do you, like, do you feel... God, is it spiritual oh. when you're playing? Ooh, oh, oh. My, Sherry. Hey! It, you know, when I'm playing music, it's a spiritual practice. Really? I've been playing music since I was a little boy, and it's more than just entertainment. It's something that's so powerful, and you know because you touch people through your gift. Yeah. It's something that's so deeply rooted in our lineage, in our history. That's right. That when you stand here, you're the culmination of so many of the ancestors. That's it. Oh, my goodness. So you, it... And it's so funny. I, I, and I hear you talking, and just meeting you backstage, you've got such an amazing personality. But besides being a musical genius, did you grow up wanting to be in a sitcom? Oh, you know what? I want to do a sitcom, and you got to tell me about that. Oh, my goodness. Because I think, I think it's like, uh, it, it's so family-oriented, so wholesome. Yes. And I grew up watching all the old sitcoms, you know. And... I like Mary Tyler Moore. That's yes. What I did, you, did you like Mary Tyler ah! Moore? <laughs> I watched that when that was the newsroom, you see? Yes. Oh, man, I, it, it made me think about the world out there, you know, just yes. going to New York and before I moved here, obviously. And then I used to watch um, I Love Lucy, watch the Cosbys. Oh, Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad. That Felicia. was the mother of all mothers. Yeah, I had a crush on Felicia Rashad. Yes. Definitely. So if you were to meet Felicia Rashad right now, what would you do? I had a crush on her since I was a boy, and those never go. <laughs> You, they, they never leave you. It feels like you're a little boy. Every time I see her, I'm like, I don't even want to go over there. 
You know that feeling where yes, it just I do. Yes. It, it sticks with you. But no, I, I want to do a sitcom. I think it would be amazing. You would be. You have that spirit to do a sitcom. You would be very funny I, in a sitcom. But so, so tell me, how how do you feel when you're in that rhythm? And and this is first off. Congratulations on this incredible show. Oh, John. Thank John. Thank you so much. You... It is what like what you say, it's like music. It's very, it's very I cry all the time because it's very spiritual and it's very to be given the, the you know, uh, this gift and be yes. used as a vessel. So yes. it's like we 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 vibe on that. Yes, yes. Can I say what else we vibe on? What's that? You sexy as I don't know what. Oh you... my gosh. <laughs> and and I say that. I knew it was gonna catch you. And that, 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 you know what? Because I saw you in InStyle magazine. Oh my John, God. I saw you, like, <laughs> you, and that's not even it. There are other people, yes. Hey, look, why they gonna put me on there like now, that, see that? <laughs> Boy. John, are you surprised that you are turned into a sex symbol? I'm just, I'm living my life. I will look up, I look in the magazine, next thing you know, they talking about sex symbolisms. <laughs> I said, man, I, one of them times I was looking up, my friend sent me a link yes. with the People magazine, and they have the list of the sexiest men of the year, and they uh -huh. had me on there. I said, who y'all looking at? <laughs> I, don't be, I don't think about it like that, I, but you know what? I take it. You embrace it. <laughs> now, I receive it. You receive it. Oh, my God. And you're one of the ones we can only, we can only think about you from afar because you are happily, happily married. Yes, uh, yes You married yes, your childhood yes. sweetheart. Yes, yes. Your childhood yes. sweetheart. Y'all have known each other since what? Uh, how, how young were y'all? We met in, uh, in 2002. We were uh -huh. kids, middle school. In high middle school. Yeah. And you looked at your wife, well, she wasn't your wife then, and you said, I'm gonna marry her? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> back back then we were friends and I thought you know this she she grew up in in Tunisia yes. and then went to New York and was also the girl in Switzerland and I grew up in Kenner, Louisiana yes so when I met I was like she crazy <laughs> she spoke all these languages but you know what was crazy is we were in this summer camp it's my first time in New York upstate New York yes. I went up there and um we started talking, and next thing you know, we kept running into each other. It was one of those things. I met her again yes. three more years later. The next thing you know, we're in the same circle. So life is that way. You Absolutely. just have to listen to what... You have to listen to what the Spirit is telling you about your life and your oh, path. Oh, my goodness, you sure do. And I follow your wife, and she's been very, very open about her health struggles. Yes. How is she doing? Wow, she's, it's a miracle. She is doing so much better now after the transplant. Okay, she had her transplant. Yes. It, it, when you get that close to the veil of life, you realize how much really matters. That's right. That's you, right. You realize how much we have in the moment, and that's really all we have. That's it. This. That's it. So, as, as wild as it is to say, I think this season has been a blessing to us. Yes, it has, and you've been by her side every step of the way. Yes. I've seen that. Yes. I want to congratulate you on your new album, World Music Radio. The new album. This excites me. Now, what can you tell us about your album, John? It's good music. Good music. Good we music. We know that. I had a great time. My collaborators on the album, you know, Lil Wayne, you got Lana Del Rey, we won the VMA Ooh, together. Yes. There's, there's a range of different creatives, and that's what I believe in. I believe in just limitless music, limitless that's creativity. It. Absolutely. You listen to it, it's like you're listening to a radio station that plays music from all across the universe. Mm hmm So I'm so glad to share it with the people. I'm so excited that we did this. I'm excited too, and I'm excited to listen to it. And I can't sing, but you do a sitcom, I'll come on and be your mama. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I will be your mama. Look. Look at what? We gotta do that. We, yeah, I'm telling you, once, I, we, once this all, yes. we, we get this straight together, yes, yes. yes we, we gotta talk. Of course. Absolutely. Woo! I wanna say, John, Woo! thank you for being here. 
And John Batiste's album, World Music Radio, is out now. Later in the show, we will meet New York's youngest certified pilot. But up next, I'm headed to the Laugh Lounge with my buddy, Brad Williams. John Batiste. of season two, and we are bringing the funny with a very good friend of mine. Please welcome the hilarious Brad Williams. Hey! Brad. Sherry! Brad. Thanks for having me on the show. You took two dwarves on your chest, and then you put one in the studio. <laughs> You're replacing them. I love that. Good to be here. And I love you, Brad. You are welcome. Now, you, this is great because you are on tour. Yes. I love going on the road, but it's just tough being away from the family. Yeah. How you handling that? I got a family. I got. I, I have a wife, and I have a three-year-old baby girl. She. I know. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, very, it's very hard being on the road, but thankfully I've been there for a lot of those big moments for her. Right. I was holding her when she said her first word. Her, her, her first word, she just looked at me and she went, Daddy. And I'm like, ah! She knows who makes the money. Yes, right. Ah, it's awesome. No, she said, Daddy first. And then we, then, then we try to get her to say Mommy next. It's a very yeah. logical next word. Would make my wife really happy. Right. You say Daddy, you say Mommy. Couldn't say Mommy. Uh, ne uh, next word she said was the dog's name. Okay. Yeah, my dog's named after my favorite football player, DeBrickashaw Ferguson. <laughs> she said... <laughs> Rolled right off the tongue. <laughs> uh, couldn't say mommy. Couldn't pronounce the M. Her M came out like a B. Like a B. So she called my wife Bob. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. I laughed every single time it happened. I we we we'll get her in the morning. She'd be like Daddy and Bob, and I'm cracking <laughs> up. My wife is like, it's not that funny. I'm like, yes it is. Yes it is funny. What's so funny about it? I mean, later on tonight, I'm gonna try and hook up with Bob. <laughs> I haven't said that since college. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, it's been absolutely amazing. Oh, man, it, it, I love this so much. I, it, and I'm glad you're here because you usually in LA where it's hot, yeah. but fall is here. Yeah. So what you got planned for the family? Oh, uh, I got nothing. I got <laughs> nothing planned. My wife makes all the plans. I bought a house. Whenever I'm home, I'm like, I bought that. Let's stay in the house. <laughs> we just paid for it. My wife is like always making plans. But see, we've been married now for almost eight years. So like she doesn't think about me yeah. being a little person all the time because uh -huh. my wife's not a dwarf. That's how you know I'm funny. <laughs> uh, like be like, Brad, you're a comedian. Are you any good? Yes, this is who I'm with. Um, <laughs> But so she always makes these plans, but she forgets. Like the other day, she's like, oh, it's fall. I made these plans, honey. We are going apple picking. Oh my gosh, apple picking. Uh -huh. She wants to take her dwarf husband. <laughs> apple picking! Listen, I don't know if people do impressions on the show. Here's my impression of me apple picking. Ready? <laughs> Why not strawberries? That would have made sense. I could have been an ass. Run, drag my arm, get them all one shot. That would have been great. Okay, so no apple picking, but then. No apple picking. Okay, so the Halloween is coming up. Yeah. Are y'all talking about costumes for little baby Elway? Yeah, so my daughter is also a dwarf, and uh, which me, uh, but, but she's not just a dwarf, she's also my wife's kid. Which, <laughs> which means she's an Asian dwarf. Uh -huh. And if you're like, what does that look like? Cutest baby you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh my God, baby Yoda, you got nothing. You got <laughs> nothing on Asian dwarf baby. Asian dwarf baby, she's not even a kid. She's a Pokemon. Uh oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Like Asian dwarf baby, Angelina Jolie is like, I don't have one of those. <laughs> I can't wait for Halloween. This is what I so much I love, I love about you. I love your relationship with your family. Yeah. I love your relationship with your wife. Yeah. Do y'all have nicknames for each other? Yeah, the one, the one I call her, I can't say on daytime TV. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but she's been calling me short king. Short Apparently, king. that's like a thing, like, yo, you're a short king. I don't think that's a compliment. Be like, oh, Brad, you're a short king. Great, you just called me a chess piece. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, no, you're a short king. All right, now I'm the villain from Shrek 1. <laughs> like, nobody wanted to hook up with Lord Farquaad, all right? <laughs> You gotta change the nickname. Oh my gosh, Brad, I'm so glad you came. Thank you for saying yes to me. Yes! Y'all give it up for Brad Williams. Yeah. And for more info 
on the Brad Williams Comedy Tour, go to SherryShowTV.com. And up next, we shout out New York's youngest black female certified pilot. Keep it here, Brad Williams. <laughs>
Karen. Hello, hello. So, Karen, you are a retired NYPD detective. Yes. All right. I love. Yes. Thank Pilot you. Detective. Thank you. Now, you did security in this building, and you saw a lot of real housewives oh, come yes. through here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I did the um, Housewives of New Jersey a Ooh, few how, times. What was that? Uh, contentious. Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I also did um, the Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. You know, they were some fly cookies. Okay, like, I know that's okay, right. Okay, that up then, okay. Well, yes. I'm so excited that you're here. Because Thank you. you have 30 seconds to collect as much money as you can. I'm gonna get in that booth and help you. So let's Thank get you. ready. Come on, let's okay. put your glasses on. Okay. I'm gonna say you go first. I'm okay. gonna let you go in here first. All right. Karen, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. You ready? Get set. Go. All right, come on. Okay. Get this come on up here. There we go. Now we can make it up. You are going to your, oh my God, we, we, there we go. All right, Karen, we are gonna count up this money and we will be right back to tell you how much you got. We gonna empty it out. We counted Karen's money and Karen won $879. Tomorrow, Julie Chen, Mumbez will be here. So come join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye.